mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and every one of you for being here this evening to support the family of our dear sister of Sheila Yolene Hines. At this time we are going to take a number of tributes and I want to remind those who will be given the tributes. We don't have a whole lot of time so keep your presentations as short as possible so we can begin the rest of the service at 200 dot. We're going to invite at this time Gregory Green to come forward and share his tribute on behalf of the Chancel Seventh day Adventist Church where Sister Sheila Hines worship. Brother Gregory Green. And this will be followed by Philip Hines. Good evening, everybody. Firstly, on behalf of all the members of the Chancel of Seventh-day Adventist Church, we would like to offer our deepest condolences to all the families, all the friends, and relatives. Okay. You could easily miss her in a crowd, for she was not the tallest. You could easily miss her seated in the congregation at Chancel. She was not very outspoken in public. 
Generally, she would just sit quietly in her seat, normally on the right side of the church upon entering on Sabbath mornings, quietly sitting but observe, absorbing every word that came from the pulpit. Sometimes she would have Christian as well. You see, she had an encounter with the man Christ Jesus. And her life from that point on was never the same. The year 2004, the month April, well, there are certain months of the year at Chance all where there are many and many birthdays. April happens to be one of them. And at Chance Hall, we call them the April Roses. <laughs> but inspired by the Holy Spirit was Pastor Cook, Winston Cook, who delivered God's messages night after night and Sabbath after Sabbath for six weeks. It did not take long, however, that long, however, for the Holy Spirit to convince her that what Pastor Cook was preaching was truth. And on the 17th day of April 2004, she surrendered her life in baptism to Jesus. Yes, yesterday, 17th of April, would have been 20 years for her as an Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist. Now, she didn't know why God's wondrous grace to her was made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed her for his own. She didn't know how the saving faith to her he did impart, nor how believing in his word brought peace within her heart. She didn't know how the Holy Spirit moved during the crusade in 2004, convincing her of her sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. She didn't know when her Lord may come at night or noonday fear. But one thing she knew, she knew who she had believed, and she was persuaded that he is able to keep which that she had committed unto him against that day. And when Jesus comes again, which as we can see the signs all around tells us that it will be very soon, she, according to her faith, will meet him in the air. You see, she was assured that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord had become her refuge and her fortress. He had become her God and she trusted in him. God's truth was her shield and a buckler. Sister Hines went to sleep in Jesus with this psalm, Psalm 91, being one of her favorite psalms. The word of God tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13, and it says, But I would not have you ignorant, my brethren, the Apostle Paul speaking to the saints at Thessalonica, and we can take heart to these words as well. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He continues in verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. 
Sister Hines died with that hope. She died knowing Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And we are sure that what Jesus had promised, he is able also to perform. And so my words to the family, my words to all of us here who are grieving, verse 18 tells us, but the Apostle Paul comfort one another with these words. Amen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, my name is Philip Hines. I'm the first of. You can read or read it for me. Yeah, read it for me. Yeah. Okay, I'll read this for my husband. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Philip Hines. I'm the firstborn of my mother, Sheila Hines. We are here to celebrate her life and thank God for giving her to us for as long as he did. Now we have to learn how to deal with her death as it has left a void in our hearts. Growing up, my mother was very straight. My siblings and I were not allowed to go to bed with dishes in the sink. My mother bears sure of that. She also made sure that we attended school every day. If something was not right, she would always say, pray about it. We moved from Churchill to Bentham's in the early 80s. Mother immigrated to Canada in the late 90s with my wife and I. When mother got her permanent residence, she was very excited. And I remember she said, now I can get a job here, but she didn't have to. Despite being an Adventist by faith, she followed her faith but accompanied my family to church on Sundays at City Center Baptist Church. She was loved by everyone that she came in contact with there. Even further, she loved her children unconditionally. There were her pride and joy. She later moved back to Barbados where she passed. I want to thank my brothers and sisters for looking after her during her time of illness as I couldn't be here. With all that said, I know that my mother loved me very much and I loved her the same. I will always love you and for me, you are a gem of a parent. Until we meet again, I love you, Ethan. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to invite at this time Phil Brooms and Don Jew Brooms, followed by Lucy Ann Richards and then Godfrey Hines. Good afternoon, everyone. This is hard, but when I was asked to do a tribute to Gran, I found it to be hard only because how can you fit 40 years of stories into three minutes? I'm good. As I reminisced on so, so many special memories to find the perfect one, I realized that they're all perfect because they all reflect the person she was to me. Gran was one of the most trusted of my inner circle She was involved in every important decision of my life thus far, be it what school to go to, what job to take, or even when I was thinking about getting engaged. Her initial box standard response always was, do what you feel is right. But like clockwork, after a couple days later, she would pull me aside and ask if I thought it through and am I sure? And the answer would always be yes, Grant, I'm sure. Then she says, do what you think is right. One of the happiest days I spent with her was when I told her she was going to be a great grand. Uh, she had a professional poker face, but I forever remember the smile that broke through. Uh, that meant the world to me. She always lamented that I always needed to have children, so with the time she had, she can get around her great grandkids so she could know them better. I always teased her I would never, but I knew I would be a that she would be a fantastic great grand. I remember ho her holding my son Cameron for the first time. And she used to sing in her raspy voice and tell me story after story about when I was a baby and how she would hold me the same way. 
I remember always sitting to the side and listening to her tell the stories to me about her life. I appreciated that she always trusted me with her thoughts and experiences because I know she was fiercely private. For 31 straight years, she called me first thing, seven o'clock in the morning on each birthday and sang me happy birthday. After the song, she would let out a big laugh and tell me she loved me. My birthday would not be complete without this. Last year was the first year that that didn't happen. I tried my best to keep in constant contact after that moment, but conversations got shorter and shorter and the volume of her voice got lower and lower. I knew then I had to prepare for the inevitable task of uh, losing a piece of my heart. There's not enough preparation in the world that I can make in this moment, but the great memories, the laughs, and the chats live on. When I think of Grant now, the first memory that pops up every time she sees me as an adult, she would always come up to me and raise her voice and shout, Phil Broom, before letting out a big laugh and a big hug. I miss the happy birthdays and the talks, but I'll always love and appreciate her as she poured so much of herself into me and helped me shape the person that I am today. Thank you. Good afternoon. This tribute is from the Canadian Wien of Grand's family and the American Wien. Some of us couldn't be here today, but we know that you are watching and we know that your heart is also breaking with us. We come today to say we had a grand who loved us. She loved us individually, she loved us collectively. There was no distinction among us. And we just want to say today, though you are gone, your memories will remain. Grand, we remember the teasing. Remember your last Christmas you spent with us in Canada, with the American Wien and Canadian Wien coming together that Christmas. We had a blast of a time. And we thank you because Lord knows that you encouraged us so much individually. You told us how good we were. You also encouraged my daughter, even when her dad gone, you always let her know that she was the best. We thank you this evening for your love and you will never be forgotten. We love you, Grant. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're here today to remember and celebrate Auntie Sheila Hines. I would say thank you in Auntie, to Auntie in threefold. Her ability to make home feel like home, my perception of her character, and special moments because of her. I will attempt to do this without waterworks, but excuse me if that's not the case. When I think about anti, adjectives like strong, commanding, firm, bold, no nonsense, they dominate my brain. She invokes fear, respect, when in her home, on the phone, in her presence elsewhere, and in my thoughts. So I had no choice but to act right, or so I did. <laughs> Addie, add, Auntie added to my, my etiquette, and in short, I understood how to present myself at a dinner table well above par. She worked hard and obtained what she needed to take care of her family. Okay, remember I said Auntie was a person that invoked fear in my heart? She really did. But somehow she must have known witchcraft because she made me love her to death to this point. And by extension, her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren, some I'm yet to meet. This love led to always feeling at home in Bentham, St. Lucie. I often walked there after primary school had been dismissed. To be honest, I went there because, one, my cousins would be there, safety and companionship. Two, 
I did not want to be chased by preacher's cows, which would do that every day I walk up Churchill. Uh, three, it really was home away from home. I have many wonderful memories there from outside with the plants to Dinnerwood family. I will combine special moments with a thank you to Auntie through her children. Ladies first, Papples, thank you for always <laughs> removing pimples from my face followed by a mm-hmm. Puff, thank you for allowing me to spend Christmas at your home. To the gents, Pukert, I had no idea that was your name, but okay. Thank you for making a cousin feel wonderful by bringing my other cousin, Phil, into this world. A lot of happiness there. Digga, told you are the original. Okay, no dispute in that. Um, you were on scholarship at the time, but I have a photo of you throwing a javelin, and it added to my motivation. So unknowingly, thank you for motivating me. Sports, the other so-called Digger, but that's another situation. <laughs> you have made many trips to Churchill as a source of protection. I'm sorry, but thank you very much for your presence. Partly, many nights after track practice, you would take me home after we got off the bus to make sure that I got up the hill safe as well. And we avoided the calls at that time too. Not that I have called you all by your nicknames respectfully. I state thank you for Auntie for making her children, for they have all been a part of my life. Thank you for making sure that my tea was always accompanied by some type of pastry. <laughs> From Barbara's Girls, Max is here with you to see you off. Cat, the runaway pancake, wishes you a peaceful rest. And this harpooch kitty will miss you dearly. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Ladies, gentlemen, friends, neighbors, whoever you may be. You know, I'm the second child. If you know me by now, you never hear me talk, okay? Everybody in this family is quiet, except for me. I is the loudest, the bravest, the boldest, except when my mother looked me in the eyes and said, shut up. <laughs> you know, I'm grateful for her life because she didn't just raise me, she molded me into the man that she wanted me to be. And I'm proud of that today. You know, she died without knowing that I made it. That I'm a big boss in the state of Arizona. You know, a Bajan running among the races, showing them how it's done. That is my mother. Proud. Proud as ever. Loud? No, she wasn't loud. That's me. Okay? But... When I thought about my mother, and they asked me if I'm gonna write something, I say, write something? Why are you talking about my mother? You know, I know her backwards, and she know me inside out. A lady, passionate, she loved us all. She was a great teacher. She didn't go to college, but she was a teacher. She taught me math at an early age. I knew that if I took a sweet bread, and I divide it in half, and this is the truth, my brothers can get vexed now. If I give them half of the half, they had an if, and I had four ifs. You might take it in fear, but I was the one that did the division. But my mother, if she had known, I won't be here today to tell you about the ifs. Okay, but that is a woman that I love to the dearest, to the dearest. She taught us compassion. She taught us friendship. She taught us the meaning of love. And back in the States, there's a saying that takes a, a village to raise a child. Well, I can tell you right now, my mother raised that village. If anybody in that neighborhood was hungry and they came by, my mother would split the food, give them to eat. So I learned from a young age, eat your meat first. Because <laughs> then you don't have to split the meat 
I could always split the rice and the peas, but not my meat. So when my friends ask me if I was a meat lover, yes, I love meat, because I learned from young, eat the meat first, right? They can always have the rice. But that was just me. I was the rebel one in the family. And we have brothers here. I love each one dearly. I love my friends, my family, my neighbors. You know, when I came here today, I was so sad. I'm like, I can't talk. But then I said, mother would not appreciate that. So I'm representing. For those who are afraid to get up here and say anything, thank you. Give me your two minutes. I'll take it. OK? That lady is the love of my life. Britain lost their queen, and I lost mine. For years, I hadn't seen my mom. I was away in the United States Army. But when I finished that stint, I said I got to go and see my queen. Because if anything happened to me in Iraq or Afghanistan, and they bring my body to Barbados in a box, they're going to have to bury my queen beside me. You know, she loved all of us. She loved her kids dearly. She taught us to share. She taught us to be compassionate, empathy for your neighbors. She taught those things to us. So I am who I am, not only because of her, but because I live my life in honor of her. Days and years when I was tempted to walk the path of the crazies and being tempted by the lust of material things, I never gave in because the first thought that came to my mind was, what would my mother do if she found out that I was in the States in somebody's jail? I think she would have got on a plane, she would have come to the States, and she would have whooped my behind and want to bring me back to Barbados and whoop my behind again. So, you know, I'm grateful to her because all of those days that she told me no, there was a purpose. She taught me to be a real person, a real human being, and above all else, to love thy neighbor as thyself. So in finishing today, I know I went over by about 45 seconds, but, you know, I was thinking, how could I really honor my mother? And I, it just came to my mind. If you look at the word mother, and I said, you know what? My only true hero is a woman named Sheila Hines. I don't honor anybody else but my God. But when it comes to my mother, met me weak, man. You know, that is my queen. That is my mom. That is our mom. That's my cousins, my grand. That's her, all of our moms. And, you know, where I live, I have folks from a different culture. They're of Hispanic descent. They're, they're from Mexico. And they're like, your mom had to be a great lady because she sure raised a good man. And I'm like, made me feel proud. But she always said, mama always said, the woman that fell in love with me could neither see, hear, or smell. <laughs> she was right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Godfrey.
beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought We invite everyone to stand at this time. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raises up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou giveth them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and satisfy the deserve of everything, every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserve all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. We are gathered here this afternoon to give God thanks for the life of our dear sister Sheila Eulene Hines. We want to thank you for coming out to give support to the family. And so at this time, on behalf of my wife Margaret, who's present, and I, Pastor Leslie Padmore, who's assisting on the platform, Elder Greggy Green, we want to extend our heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones. We shall join our voices in the singing of the hymn number 499. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God, and oh, what peace we often forfeit. Needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. 
Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Oh, in all the sorrow, shame. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come burn with the Lord of care. Take it to the Lord. Thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. His arms are thick and shield thee. Thou wilt find the solace there. Kindly bow your heads and pray with me. Today, Father, we are gathered here to give you thanks for the life of our dear sister, Heinz. We give you thanks, Lord, for her, for her entire family. Those whose hearts are heavy today, who feel her loss. But we give you thanks, Lord, that while she sojourned here on earth, she made that all-important decision to turn her life over to you. And today, Lord, she rests with the assurance that one day, just as you promised that your body would be destroyed, but after three days it will be brought back to life, that all those who live and die in Christ, the death grave will not hold them forever. She rests with the hope that one day you will come again. I pray that you will put your arms of love around each bereaved family and help them to know, Lord, that you are a very present help in time of trouble. You will never leave them nor forsake them. And for those, Lord, who have not yet made that commitment to you, may they do so, so that they can be guaranteed that even though death may sting, even though grave may hold captive for a while, you have the keys of death and the grave. And one day you will open and unlock all those who are resting in Christ. So, Lord, help them to look beyond this scene, the day of sadness, to that one of gladness when you will come. And all your children resting here in Mount Pleasant Gardens will hear your voice and come forth to live eternally with you in that first resurrection. Have your own way in all that will transpire in this service today. And may everyone be uplifted and encouraged. And for those who have not yet made you the Lord of their lives, may they do it today before it is too late. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this afternoon is taken from Timothy. The apostle Paul wrote a letter to Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading verses 7 and 8. Second Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading verses 7 and 8. And it reads, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, 
but unto all them also that love his appearing. Here ends our first scripture reading. We have a tribute and song on behalf of the children, which will be given by Jermaine Atwell, No More Night. Good afternoon, everyone. Second, the scripture reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. John says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was, was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Thank you. Do ask that for apologies for that brief delay. No 
never crying again. Oh, and praise to the great I am. Oh, we will live in the light of the risen oh, The nations they bow down to see the holy song is the praise to Christ or King. So read the names from the book. King, so there's no need, no need to dread, no more night, no more tears, no more tears, and never crying again, oh, the praises to the great I am who the live in the light of the rhythm left a sea over there there's a mansion of that prepared for you and for me oh we the land for a Savior eternally and there'll be no more night oh, no more pain no, 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 no more death and never Never crying again. Oh, and praise to the great I am. Oh, we will live in the light of the Thank you, Jermaine, for sharing that message in song. I believe we're all looking forward to that day when there will be no more night. Mm -hmm. Are you? Yeah. Or you don't know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I am indeed looking forward to that day when there will be no more night. And Christ himself, he will light everything with his glory and pain and tears will all be gone and as said before death itself shall die, shall die. oh praise the name of the Lord Amen. I count it a privilege to stand today first of all to represent God in these moments to assure you that his word is still real yeah. and that he can still be trusted 
And for anyone today who may be doubting the power and the presence of God, know that he is still alive and he's still well. And he is the resurrection and the life. I also take this privilege to recognize um, the Honorable Peter Phillips, um, the MP for St. Lucie. That's just the title, but I believe I can refer to him as Peter. Um, because we have spent innumerable moments speaking together, sharing together, praying together. And I consider him as a friend today. He sits with a cap, but you're still a friend. And I see that more meaningful than even the titles that are by your name. And we thank you for your presence today as you minister in this regard. I acknowledge my colleagues who are officiating with me today. Notice I said colleagues, Elder Green. <laughs> we are still colleagues. We serve together in ministry. And by the grace of God, I know that whatever has been said already and even what will come has been seasoned and will be seasoned with the grace of God. To the bereaved, to the family today, a songwriter says, there is coming a day when no heartaches shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. We're on that happy golden shore. The songwriter says what? What a day that will be. It continued by saying there will be no sorrow there, no burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain. I love this part. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day. What a glorious day that will be. And so today, because my eyes are on that day, I hope your eyes are on that day as well. Permit me, just permit me, family, your hand, permit me to share a message with you from Mama's Bible. That's all right? Bow your heads with me as I pray. Eternal Father, your word is sure. It is indeed still a comfort for those who mourn. But it is assurance today that we can trust you. Trust you beyond the shadow of a doubt and even in the midst of pain and loss. Guide us today, we pray. May your word find root in our hearts. May we experience the salvation that Jesus offers today as we reflect on Mama's Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was given the privilege to see Mama's Bible. It brought back so much memories to me. When I say mama, I'm talking about Sister Hines' Bible. It brought back memories of a treasure I once had. It was fascinating and I found great joy in turning the pages of my father's Bible. That was after he passed. And looking at the markings in daddy's Bible, seeing how it touched his life, what the passages meant to him, how he had them highlighted and underlined, the side notes he wrote for his personal spiritual growth and development, and even what those texts meant to him, did something for my life until I was walking in Jamaica on a missionary trip one day and someone walked on the streets and they asked me for that Bible pastor. 
I paused because I knew what that Bible meant to me. I hesitated because I knew what that Bible meant to me. But I recognize that beyond what it has done for me, it can do something for somebody else. Yes. It took a little while before I could, took, I could take what was mine out of the Bible and handed it to the person on that street that asked me for it. I believed then, and I still believe now, that that Bible is saving people in Jamaica. And maybe today, just maybe today, a message from Mama Hines' Bible can save somebody in here. And that's what I have chosen. I couldn't resist it. Even though she's gone, she has left a treasure behind filled with messages from her God that can help to save the wanderer. Psalm 91 seemed to be a favorite of hers. For next to Psalm 91, she had a big tick. Yes, please. This Psalm in particular contains a message of comfort for all who pass through troubled times. And especially for God's commandment, keeping people. And for those who shall experience a time of trouble you have never seen before. In these last days, the overall theme of the psalm is security of the one who puts his trust in God. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. And what a privilege it is to carry Mama, Mama read it. Everything I will take to God in prayer. So even though the entire psalm is a beautiful and encouraging one, there are specific verses that Mama put a small tick next to. It's a good psalm. It's a great psalm. It's a powerful psalm. But there's some that I got to just put a little tick next to. And permit me to share them with you. Number one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God. Oh boy, forgive me if I get excited. If you don't want to get excited, I will. I will trust. She is gone today, but that message says something to me. Mama embraced the fact that she has a God who is her shelter, who is her refuge, who is her fortress. She says he is my God, and I'm going to trust in him. I don't know what that means for you. I know what it means for me. I can't even encapsulate all that I meant for mama, but it's a message for us today. And I have to ask the question, where are you dwelling? For the text says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high God. Where is your dwelling place today? Where are you resting today? Are you finding hope in the most high God? Can you say that he is still your God? Is he still your refuge? Is he your fortress? And are you trusting in him today? I believe that mama envisioned that, that personal experience she had with God. And she said it was a secret place. There are things that I will tell my God that I will not tell anyone else. For if I tell somebody else, they won't know what to do with it, and they may just tell somebody else. But if I tell my God, he's going to hold on to it. He's going to look out for me. He's going to work in my favor. Somebody knows what I'm talking about today. And he'll provide the answers. So let me hasten on. 
verse 5, she had another small tick there. She said, in verse 5, it says, Thou shalt not be afraid <laughs> of the terror by night. <laughs> I see Andy and your land smiling. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. You understand what that means? It coincides with my favorite text. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. So I don't care what come at night time. I'm not afraid. If an hour comes by day, I'm not afraid. Because I know who is on my side. I know who covers me. I know who encamps round about me. I know who holds my life. So if you want to come through the back door, come through. Because you think you're going to meet me, you're going to meet my God. I'm not afraid. This text also coincides with one you know very well. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. What the next verse says? You believe in God? I believe also in me. In my father's house. That's a dwelling place. My father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, uh, I'll come again. I'll receive you unto myself. So that where I am, Jesus says, if I am there, you've got to be there also. But you've got to make me your dwelling place. She put another small tick by verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. I, 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 when I, I wonder what went through her mind. They got wicked people in this world? You, you won't answer me. And I, I, I struggle with this because it's in the psalm too. And I realized the psalmist nearly lost his soul because of it. He asked, how is it that the wicked prosper? Mm. I serve in the Lord, Peter. And it seemed like everything gone wrong. Mm. But when I look out and I see a wicked man. Really? You know, she always stressed, wicked and everything good seemed to be going sweet and dandy, getting all the promotions, making all the money, not a care in the world, choosing to come from Good Friday. And he seems to prosper. The psalmist says, when I entered, the sanctuary, I understood their end. And the psalmist here is saying, listen, only with your eyes. If you make the Lord your dwelling place, I guarantee you one day yes, you will do, you can take off glasses. You will open your eyes. You will see the reward. If you live long enough, you will see it even before Jesus comes. I have seen some wicked people try to stand in my way. And I'm not old yet. And I have seen the Lord. He has handled my case. Yes. I don't have to fight. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. I'm just giving you a message from Mama's Bible here. Yeah? I'm just telling you the things that impacted mama. I'm just letting you know where she stood and what she held on to because her dwelling place was in the presence of God. Yes. Verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. I believe mama had in mind, if, if I place my affairs in the hands of God, Sam says the, 
the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. I put my affairs in the hands of God. He's going to take care of them. And he's even at my dwelling place. He is at my house. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Anybody who comes here understands that this is God's house. He dwells here. And no evil shall come near it. So all those who want to set up and do all kind of things to my household, understand that you're dealing with a God. But let me hasten on. She says, as she ticks it, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. But this verse is in the context, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God specializes, if you did not know it before, from the day you exited your mother's womb. An angel was assigned to you. A guardian angel. Who is, well, for me, I know I cause him to work over time. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows what I'm talking about. But God has positioned his angels to watch over you. He has given them charge, not only to watch over, but to keep you. Unless you dash your foot against a stone, in other words, in case you make a mistake, you find yourself in trouble, I have assigned some angels. They're going to bear you up in their hands. God's faithful children are always and constantly under the care of his angels. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Notice here, by an abrupt and dramatic change, God becomes now the speaker. It's no longer the psalmist. God now speaks in his own person and stamps his approval on the psalm and seals it with his own promise. He says, because mama has set her love upon me, I will deliver her. I will set her on high. Because what? She knows my name. Do you know God? Have you just heard about him? And he has promised, if you know my name, I'll set you on high. Oh boy. I'm going to cause you to ride on high places. I'm going to prosper you and give you a new name. You are my child. And verse 16 is the last one she took. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a message from Mama's Bible. She had a long life. Eh? She had a good life. Some people have long lives, but it's not good, you know. And I believe the Lord is just prolonging those days so he can just save them. The text says, 1 Timothy, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Therefore, the apostle is confident there is a crown awaiting me. If God prospers you and blesses you with life today, 
you better give God some praise. Everyone is not making it with long life. But if God finds favor on you and he blesses you with long life, give him praise. Serve him. Be faithful to him. Oh boy. What this little stripling here know about serving and keeping the faith? The milk's still on my face. Huh? Just exit the mother's womb and I'm talking about serving the Lord. Yes, it's a good thing. I find no greater joy. I have less to worry about. Because I know who takes care of me. I am dwelling in the secret place of the most high God. But what was interesting, y'all and family, was that after Psalm 91, where she put those little ticks next to the one she loves, she gone right into Psalm 92 and take out a red pen and circle verse 1 and 2. Oh boy. <laughs> Mama's Bible. Let me just read it for you. <laughs> and I hope you get just as excited as Mama, as Mama did. Verse 1 of Psalm 92 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. She moves from understanding what her God does for her into a praise atmosphere to continually give God thanks. When you consider what God has done for you, it should always push you into an atmosphere of praise. When you look at how where, where, look where God has brought you from and what he has shielded you from and the wicked people that he protect you from, you better shout hallelujah. When you recognize that you merely missed that car by a, mm, and that bus nearly take you out, when you recognize that all evil is being planned. Oh boy. Let me go over this side here. And look at your land. All evil is being planned against you. And she called me to the office. To pray. And you recognize that God takes you. He covers you. He positions you. He plants you. And he causes you to excel. Come on. You better praise God. For people sit their plot against you when you're sleeping. What you could do tomorrow, boy? What you could really do tomorrow to really harass and torment and even bring down? How can I destroy their character? But when God for you, in every tongue that rise against you, God said, I'm going to contend with them. And so I'm calling the people of God today to praise. Mama has taught us something. And if you have a Bible, come on, go and start taking your Bible here. There is plenty in the word of God for you. For the troubled soul today, come on, go and take. The Lord is still your shepherd. If anybody, everybody should know that they teach you that in primary school, right? If it's one psalm you had to say in primary school, it is that one. One that you had to write out in your book, it is that one. One you had to know by heart, it is that one. And then they turn around and make you sing it too. The Lord, my shepherd. So you got to know it. But go back to your Bible. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. And guess what? My cup. Surely he says goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come on, you got goodness and mercy following you? All the days of my life. And what did Simon say? 
Where, what did he say? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are you making the Lord your dwelling place? For the final reading that we had today said, I saw a new heaven, a new earth. First heaven and first earth, they were, there was no more sea. I, John, I saw new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, a bride adorned for her husband. Tears are going to be gone. Sorrow is going to be gone. Pain is going to be gone. And an in inspiration, the Lord said to John, write, write it for all those who are coming after you. Write it for these words. They are true and faithful. As I close today, the ultimate satisfaction that God promises will be a life in his presence and nothing less than this can satisfy the human heart. Oh, what a day it will be when we will be in a place <laughs> that is not 90 something degrees you felt the last couple of days if it's so hot <laughs> down here hell not for me you know believe what it it's too hot and so I want to join with mama there are a few songs that mean something to me. The first one says, To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Do what? Praise the Lord. And let the earth hear his voice. I join with another songwriter to say, The Lord's a rock, in him we hide. He's a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied. He is still that shelter in the time of storm. He is still that mighty rock, Elder Green. In a weary land, cooling shade, on burning sand, a faithful guide for the pilgrim band. He's our shelter in the time of storm. And I want to close with this one. I know whom I believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Family, if you get the chance, go back and look at Mama's Bible. I just got a little sneak peek. I don't know what else is there, but you might find hope for your soul. I don't know if they will permit anybody else in here to see Mama's Bible, but if you get the chance, oh dear. But beyond that, and I believe that's why God put that person on the street in Jamaica. You've got to move past Mama's Bible. You've got to move past Daddy's Bible. And you've got to now start ticking in your own Bible. That was Mama's experience. But what now is your experience with your God? What is he saying to you? Where is he leading you? How is he trying to save you? I just have three simple questions. Today, are you saved? Come on, if you're saved, come on, wave your hand today, man. You saved? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm saved, 
And I know that I am. You know that one? <laughs> I'm saved. Perchance today you are not clear, I'm going to pray for you. Because God wants to save you. He wants to make his dwelling place your dwelling place. And I'm going to invite all of us to stand. But I really want to invite the family. Something that I've started doing recently, the family, just to join me right here at the front as we surround Sister Hines, come a little closer. Hold each other's hand, hug somebody. This is my little secret. I can tell you my little secret. The reason I do this is because when I see you here, I envision seeing you standing before Jesus the same way. I envision seeing you standing in heaven, the entire family, holding hands. Right now there may be tears and burden on a heart, but then it will be joy unspeakable. And the word of God says never to part again. Today I'm praying for you the congregation that is here, I'm also praying for you as we commit ourselves to God and make sure that his dwelling place is our dwelling place. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Almighty God, eternal Father, omnipotent one, you have graced us today with your presence. You have shown us, Father, a message from Mama's Bible. We hold on to it today, God. Bless us with long life, and even may we experience your salvation. We thank you for allowing the angels you have given them charge over us to keep us, O oh God. We thank you. Today we declare... You are our God, our refuge, and our fortress. You are our hiding place. God, with confidence, we come today on behalf of the family. Lord, as they grieve, in their own ways, as their faces differ, they grieve differently, God, but provide the comfort that they need. Give them hope, God, in the coming of the Lord. Help them to know that Mama rests in peace, but she awaits the return of her blessed Lord. Today I ask God that you will give them the strength to cope. The wisdom, Father, to, to approach the days ahead. But the emotional, psychological, and mental fortitude to approach each day with a song in their heart. I'm praying, God, as they stand here today, hugging each other and holding hands, when you shall come in all your glory, Lord, May they be standing the same way to meet you as their Lord, their Savior, and their returning King. I'm praying today, God, that you will save them as you would have saved Mama. Save them, I pray, and seal their decisions for eternity. I'm praying, God, for the congregation all gathered here inside and outside, O oh Father. If perchance we have not experienced the salvation of God before, time is too late. God, may we experience it so that when our names are called, they will be called from the Lamb's book of life. 
my prayer today, Father, as you have attended this service of celebration, continue to, to attend our immediate lives, our lives to come. The psalmist says, your word is still a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. And we're careful, Lord, just like Mama, for it is still a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. You deserve the praise, the honor, and the glory, even in the daytime. And we will be careful to exalt you and lift you up because of your faithfulness, even at nighttime. It is because of your mercies we are not yet consumed. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen and amen. God bless you today, family. Stay strong. In the mighty name of Jesus. While we're standing, we shall sing that hymn number 341. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in, number 341. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, so love be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and let the people rejoice. All come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. All oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer, the promise of God, but offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus our pardon received. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and let the people rejoice. All come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great or rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But lower and higher, and greater will be a wonder, a transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray, oh Heavenly Father, as we prepare to take our dear sister Sheila to her temporary resting place, where she remain until the time of resurrection. I pray the Lord to be faithful and true. Bless us all, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our recess, recessional hymn, Does Jesus Care? Oh, yes. He cares. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain to deeply for mirth and song as the burdens as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long oh yes he cares i know he cares his heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary the long nights dreary i know my savior cares does jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear as the daylight fades into deep night chase does he care enough to be near oh yes he cares oh yes he cares his heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary the long nights dreary i know my savior cares does jesus care when i've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me and my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks is it all to him does he see oh yes he cares oh yes i know he cares his heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary the long nights dreary i know my save your cares hallelujah
now we are at her resting spot. We ask your God that you will be with us now, be with the family as you were with them before. Do it again, O oh Father. Increase your strength even now. This is not the final say. This is just goodbye until we see in the morning. Reassure them of your hope even now and bless these proceedings, I pray in Jesus' name. For as much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear sister Sheila to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection when our Lord shall return in glory. Then this body of our humiliation shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Corinthians 15, 51 through to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord add a special blessing to the reading of his holy word. 
and may it comfort us and encourage us today. I invite you to turn now in your leaflet to page 7. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Christian hope. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. Sorry, verse on page 8. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and when that roll is called up yonder, I will be there.
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but praise God, I'm now found. I was blind, but now I see. cheering this Christian home.
question is asked now, how far from home? I asked as on, I bent my steps, the wash, watchman spake, the long dark night is almost gone. And yes, the morning soon will break. Weep no more. of the blessed, that country so bright and so fair, and oft are its glories confessed. We spoke about them today, but the question is, what must it be to be there? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
sought the Lord And He answered me And delivered me From every fear Those who look on Him Are radiant They'll never be ashamed They'll never be ashamed this Corbin cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds His saints, He will deliver them.
rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great. Once again, not this time, rather, before we have our closing prayer, let me on behalf of Pastor Blackman, the preacher for this afternoon, Pastor Leslie Padmore, Elder Gregory Green, and myself, Pastor Granville Hines, on behalf of the Family Express, heartfelt thanks to all of you for coming out this evening to give God thanks to celebrate the family. Let me also thank the FA Grace Funeral Home for taking the time to work with the family and of course the management and staff of the Mount Pleasant Memorial Gardens for preparing the place of burial. Thanks once again on behalf of the family. At this time we're going to have our closing prayer by Pastor Leslie. Kindly bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Father, even now we ask that you would mark this very spot where your child rests. 
and that the next voice that she hears will be your voice calling her to life, life that will never end on resurrection morning. We ask, Lord, that those who are here, that you would teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Help, dear God, that we would recognize the brevity of life, and hence recognize that our lives are just like a vapor. It's here, and then it just disappears. We are thankful, Lord, for the blessed hope that you've gone to prepare a place for us and that you will come again and receive us unto yourself. That where you are, there we may be also. So I even ask, Lord, that even now, that you will continue to be with each family member and in a way that only you can understand. Put your arms of love, comfort, soothe, and help them to look beyond this scene to that glorious scene when you will come. Bless us, Lord, even as we go from this place to our respective places. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Pleasant good evening to everyone. Please be safe, travel safe. And just one moment, just one moment. There's something else to be done. special song is going to be played and balloons and some very special doves are going to be released um, as we close all right
right, we're ready. Her 